78 and sunny in Southern California. AFC West action on the way. Denver and San Diego with the Chiefs undefeated at 9-0. Denver at 7-1 and the Chargers at 4-4. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with the Super Bowl MVP quarterback Phil Sims. And what are you looking for with this one today? Well, I think anytime you play the Denver Broncos, the San Diego Chargers got a Two things I got to think. How can we score 40 points to give ourselves a chance to win? Or do you have some answers against Peyton Manning that offense to keep it in the high 20s or maybe the low 30s to give yourself a chance to win? Today's game is broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television as you look at Jack Del Rio. I have a question for you as well. How different will Denver look today with Jack Del Rio coaching, interim coach, John Fox recovering from his heart surgery, resting back in Charlotte? And I don't think we'll see any difference, Jim. They've been in contact all week long. Jack Del Rio's been with John Fox for many years. They'll run the game pretty much the same way. Matt Prater gets a touchback to get this started. Denver decided to defer after winning the toss. And here comes Phillip Rivers. What a season he's having. 72% clip, and he's on nearly a 5,000-yard pace. His offensive line, the anchor there, has been Hardwig. It's been a different look, rebuilt, Ferries moved around, others have been brought in, including the first rounder Fluker at right tackle. And there's Keenan Allen, what a find he was in the third round. The receiver leads all rookies in receiving yardage, third rounder out of Cal Berkeley. Going to come out with a two tight end set, the Chargers at four and four on the year. And they run it on first down and get a quick six from Ryan Matthews. Now we talked about Del Rio. When we met with him last night, he said, my main thing remains being the defensive coordinator, even though he's the interim head coach. There's Phillips, his first nine years with the Chargers. And Miller now in his third game back after the six-game suspension to start the year. Harris with a couple of picks in the matchup here last year. The big, furious comeback win by Denver, including a pick six by Harris in that second-half surge. Antonio Gates is out for the second snap. John Phillips is in at tight end. We'll call it second and five, and again they go with Matthews. And they're moving the pile to within a yard of, or two of the first. Jack Del Rio, of course, a longtime coach at Jacksonville. He's been on John Fox's staff first at Carolina, and now in his second year as defensive coordinator here, so he knows the way Fox likes things to be done. You know, he said not much change with the football team this week. They know how to run the practice the way John Fox uh, has done it for many years. And I think the big thing is just try to keep everything as normal as possible. That's what this team is used to. I think they had a great week of preparation. They bring in Danny Woodhead. The Chargers do on third and a long yard. And Rivers passes batted down. Knocked down by Kevin Vickerson. And the Denver defense, which came up with five takeaways in its last game in the fourth quarter alone against Washington, forces a three and out. Anytime you see a knockdown pass, it's usually penetration by defensive linemen. Look at their all-around Phillip Rivers pressure defense by the Broncos. Tight coverage down the field. San Diego and its loss to the Reds. Oh, look at this. It's a fake up the middle with Weddle. And he's going to have enough, it looks like. First down. They run the fake with Weddle. The up back takes the snap. It was fourth and a long yard. And they pick up the first down. Here comes the snap to Weddle, really well disguised. It looks like it, it was less than a yard, about a, a short yard, I would say. And Mike McCoy, that tells you what he thinks about the game. They want to get momentum on their side early, try to control the football, and what's the most important thing when you play the Broncos? Keep Peyton Manning on the sideline. Gutsy call from his own 29 to start this game, and they are rewarded. Now on first down, they go five wide. From the pocket. Rivers open. He's got his man. It's Allen. Near the 50. Keenan Allen coming off a uh, best of the year. 128 yards on eight catches against the Redskins. Bottom of your screen. Keenan Allen just a what a surprise as a rookie. Sometimes wide receivers in the NFL. It takes them a year or two to really get adjusted. 
to tight coverage down the field. He's adapted pretty fast and good route runner, very sharp. They were very fortunate to get him in the third round in the college draft. Picked up 18 yards. And here is Matthew shaking off an early tackle attempt. There is a crowd down as he zigzags near the 30. And inside the 20. And bounces off another hit. What a run by Ryan Matthews. But it might be coming back. Holding. Offense. Number 83. 10-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. It's called on the tight end, John Phillips, and it'll wipe out the 39-yard run. John Phillips, 83, gets outside. He's going to try to seal it on Vaughn Miller and over-pursued it a little bit, reaches out and grabs him and takes him to the ground. Anytime you see runners take it to the outside now in the NFL, with the athletic ability of all these guys out there on the defensive side, hard not to hold them. That whole effort by Matthews taken away. 39 yards it would have been good for. Instead, they step it off back to the 39 of the Chargers. One thing you'd like to think you can do when you go against this Broncos defense is run the football some. I think they pressure the passer pretty well. On first and 20, they go draw with Ronnie Brown. And he's got four. Now this Mike McCoy offense, of course Mike coming over from Denver where he had served as the offensive coordinator, had been there for four years, bright mind right here and highly sought at the end of last season by several teams to be the head coach. And they've gone a little bit with like a Denver Bronco look with their offense. Yeah, a little bit. Some of the mechanics of how you run the offense, he learned from Peyton Manning. He's brought that here. You know, you've got Ken Wisenhut, the offensive coordinator. Knows Mike McCoy, they both kind of like the same type of offense. Then you got Frank Wright from Indianapolis and Buffalo. So a lot of thoughts gone in. It's worked well. Second and 16. And almost intercepted. And that was Chris Harris Jr. And we had mentioned he had two picks here last year in the game against the Chargers. All teams need really that third defensive back. And we've talked about him many times in the past. Chris Harris plays that slot receiver. This is against Eddie Royal. I've said it and still believe maybe the toughest position to play in pro football right now, to be the extra defensive back, to play a guy in the middle of the field who can go anywhere. Great job that time by Chris Harris. Yeah, he's, he's so accustomed to taking on the challenge of that slot receiver, Eddie Royal in this case. And it's third and 16, needing to get to the 41 of Denver for the first down. They'll go draw again. And it's Ronnie Brown. Broncos have that side covered, including Mike Adams who comes up. Adams getting the start today at safety with Ian Acho out with an ankle. Yeah, interesting call, but why I don't have anything to say against it is just this simple fact. You play a defense that takes chances. They can get to the quarterback. They got Von Miller, excellent pass rusher. No use taking that big chance here early in the game. Punt it away. Get good field position. Cyphers coming back out. Presumably to punt this time. He had two punts last week down to the one. And Holiday makes the fair catch at the 14 after a 35-yard boot. Here comes Peyton Manning. He is rewriting the record book, putting up numbers through the first half of the season we've never seen in the history of this league through eight games. And his line includes the former Charger, Vasquez, at right guard, who was a free agent signee in the offseason. Former third-round pick by San Diego back in 09. And Welker actually began his NFL career as an undrafted free agent here in San Diego back in 2004. Very short-lived career here before they cut him after week one in 04. Coming out of the bye and... Manning's first handle was a handoff to Moreno for no gain. Right into the arms of Donald Butler. Here's John Pagano in his defense. He's the coordinator of this side. Legion on the line. Their first rounder back in 2011. And Butler just made that tackle. He's been out the last three weeks with a groin injury. And Eric Weddle, who had the fake punt converted. There's the lofted pass. Moreno, and he knows where to go for that first down. He's got it. And a pickup of 12. 
They did get pressure. Man Ty Tail came on a little bit of a delayed blitz. Got a free run at Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning knew nobody was on the running back. He got rid of it just in time. One first down, fake into the line, wide open pass over to Thomas. And he was not pushed out as he races down the sideline and in for the touchdown. Boy, how close was he to that sideline? They say on the field, 74 yards and a touchdown. Now, fast pace by the Denver offense. They wanted to do this today, and they talked about it. The Chargers say they'll throw it in the flat very fast. That's what we saw that time. He was close. First thought doesn't look like he did go out of bounds, Jim. Of course, touchdowns, all scoring plays are reviewed. Julius Thomas, I tell you, Derek Cox, how did he miss him? Cox, who was benched in the second half last week against Washington, looked like he had an easy play to shove him out of bounds. And no, he, he stayed in the whole way. 74 yards and a ninth touchdown of the year for Julius Thomas. His longest of this incredible season for Julius. Got a flag on the extra point attempt. Little late call. Yeah, Corinthe, gonna review it. Corinthe said, hold on a minute. I called this dead before the snap on the PAT. I think he wants to go back over. He is. He's going to go back and double check on that tight row back by Julius Thomas down the sideline. So it's not in the books yet. And it oh, is. Oh, yeah. It's clearly a touchdown. No question. Yep, and Derek Cox, that was tough. He was being blocked, couldn't get his hand out there. But uh, I, I'm going to reiterate it one more time. The quick throws in the flat, that's what Pete Manning will do to you. He'll make you cover those so we can throw behind you later in the game. And what's the other thing? Of course, Julius Thomas looks like a wide receiver running down the field and clearly stays in bounds, but it's yards after the catch. When you play this Broncos team, you got to play tight coverage, you got to tackle well, and yards after the catch, they're number one in the NFL. You know, I talked about, I was about to go into the Broncos coming out of their bye week, which they said right down the line, they all needed it, including Julius Thomas, who was nursing an ankle during the, the bye. And still, he showed great speed in breaking that one. Here's Corinthe to confirm it. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner did not step out of bounds. It is a touchdown. You know, one thing comes out of the bye week, Jim, for skilled players like Julius Thomas. We heard it from Demarius Thomas also. When you run so much in practice when you're a receiver, you get your legs, they get the rest, you get them back. And, man, he looked fast that time going down the sideline. Yeah, no signs of that uh, nagging ankle injury. And the 74 yards puts Peyton over 3,000 on the season. For the 15th time in his career, he's got a 3,000-yard season. Of course, he's uh, actually on pace for nearly a 6,000-yard year if it was to work out that way. I thought it was pretty interesting. The Broncos just kind of go, they, well, they studied themselves, which all teams do during their bye week, and they came to one conclusion. You know, we're not playing fast enough, and I don't think the, the rest of the league will agree to that. But when you get a team that plays fast and smart, that's really talented, man, it's tough to stop. Nate Manning's 30th touchdown of this season. And look at his record in Denver, 20 and four. And that actually becomes his 67th touchdown. So How about he's that, uh, 50 more touchdown passes than picks. Look at those numbers just a little more. It's, it's 60, 70%, over 300. The numbers are, they're incredible, even by today's standards that we see. Well, again, his numbers uh, we're totally unfamiliar with. The 71%, it's um, second to Rivers on this season, uh, but it's right on NFL record pace for a full season. And I mentioned 6,000 yards. Actually has a shot on pace coming into this one for over 5,800. 32 consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass. And a quick strike long distance when you add it all up. The 74 yards and another Prater touchback. Fantasy football fans get a fresh start with Player Challenge. 
four-week game that now includes even bigger cash prizes. All the rules are at cbssports.com slash challenge. Well, that's a stunner. And I think a lot of folks down here, San Diego fan base, thinking, well, we just got to find a way to try to just uh, outscore them. I, they, they're concerned about their defense and having any shot yes. at defending. Well, they made a mistake. Nobody covered a tight end. Didn't tackle well down the field. It's everything they didn't want. Hip-hop move. And a gain for Ronnie Brown of three. You, know, you, you really just kind of go back to that. The holding penalty, how that changed momentum. Uh, you know, you get a free runner at Peyton Man, he gets rid of the football. The margin of error when you play the Denver Broncos is, of course, very small. Their defense, even though the ranks, their ranking is not very high, I think it's a big play defense that can, when it gets hot, it can steamroll an offense. The second and seven. Rivers slings it over for the completion to Eddie Royal near the first. Give him five. You know, ever since that 39-yard run that was called back because of holding, Ryan Matthews has been on the bench, on the San Diego bench, getting some attention. He's got his helmet off, and that's why we've been seeing a lot of Ronnie Brown here in the last few snaps, going back to the last series. Third and two. It's Brown, and a much needed first down. Well, it's a good job. You're right. Much needed first down, Jim. When you look at this offensive line of the San Diego Chargers, Nick Hardwick is the center. Uh, Clary is the right guard. He used to be the tackle. And Trautman, who's come in for the injured Reinhardt at left guard, I think they're all strong. They can hold their ground. Uh, they're physical. So when you need some tough yards, run it up inside with your maybe your three best run blockers. New set of downs at the 31. With a flag down, Rivers has a man wide open. It's green. But the flag thrown right in the direction of the offensive line. Play went for 34, but I believe it'll be coming back too. Holding, offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Two 30-yard-plus plays have been called back. Left tackle, Keen Dunlap, right here at the bottom of your screen. And Robert Ayers just surprised him with an inside move. It was fast. That's why he holds. You know, when you look at Robert Ayers, he just got in. So many guys are starting to really blossom for this Denver defense. Robert Ayers being one of them. Malik Jackson, a backup, another guy. Sean Phillips, the ex-charger, has caught on to the system and now becoming a very good pass rusher on the outside. On first and 20, Rivers over the head of Antonio Gates, but that merits a flag. There's Quentin Jammer, who spent his first 11 years in the league right here in San Diego. Chargers' first round pick back in 02, out of Texas. Well, if anybody would know the routes of Antonio Gates, it would be Quentin Jammer, I would think. Pass interference, defense, number 23, with grabbing of the arm. Automatic, first down. And who won the game between Cincy and Baltimore in overtime? Back to New York. Hey, Jim, it was a valuable foot. Yes, Justin Tucker, 46-yard field goal. Baltimore wins 2017 in overtime. Baltimore improves to 4-5. and five. Cincy drops to 6-4. and four. Back to Jim Nance and Phil Simms. All right, thank you, J.B. and Dan. Just an incredible finish to that one with the Hail Mary to tie it at the end of regulation. But the Ravens pull off the victory after squandering the big lead. They come back and win it in the OT. First and ten. And that's Brown darting ahead to the 36. The job is you watch this so far, though, this... San Diego offense not in a great hurry, trying to be a little more methodical, just if nothing else, try to disrupt the rhythm of the whole different Broncos team. But of course, we always say that we really mean paid man in the offense, try to keep him on the sideline as long as you can. Second and 
second and three. Play action. Nothing open down the field. Rivers shakes off the sack. And he's close to the first down. He was able to break free from Dickerson. Mm. Well, that was an excellent job. Phillip Rivers loves to step up in the pocket, talked a lot about what he's been doing this year. He's been very active, but the pressure on the outside, what a nice job. Protected the football, nowhere to throw it. Coverage. Nobody breaks open. Well, it's going to be third and short again. Of course, last week, that elusive one yard, the three plays from the Washington one. See if they can pick it up here for a first down. Ronnie Brown. First down, San Diego, and a gain of five. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, welcome, welcoming many of you to San Diego, where the Broncos are up. A quick seven on a 74-yard touchdown pass from Peyton Manning to Julius Thomas. How about that run by Ronnie Brown? Keep this crowd, give it some hope, and get some life back in your own football team. Well, he's had a lot of wars, a couple injuries, and goes over McClain. Picks up, as you said, it's a, it's a big first down early in the first quarter. This is the Chargers' second possession of the game, and Brown again leaves his feet. And has a gain of about four. You look at this Denver defense, though, Jim, we've talked about it, and Jack Del Rio, the defensive coordinator slash head coach today, of course, but it is more athletic than the one we saw last year, especially when you start talking about the big guys inside. Terrence Knight and Kevin Vickerson having a solid year. They're fast in the defensive backfield. They got Rodgers Cromartie, who can cover anybody in the NFL one-on-one. -on -one. Chargers have run 15 plays to this point. Seven of them have been rushes by Ronnie Brown. Make, make it Woodhead this time. And Woodhead smashes ahead for a first. Running behind King Dunlop for eight. Boy, Danny Woodhead, a lot of times you think he's in the game. It could be a pass to him, but... Jim, we saw it for many years in New England. He is excellent at picking the right hole, where to run, delays sometimes and waits to the last second to make that decision, and boom, shoots through there and gets some good yards. So a first down at the Denver 45. Hey, Seattle Field! Seattle Field! Hey, like to welcome the nation to San Diego, the Chargers and the Broncos as Ronnie Brown runs it for about three. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here in Southern California on a warm, beautiful day. And the Broncos on their first series of the game went for the long one. Actually, most of it after the catch. Julius Thomas, 74 yards from Peyton Manning. This is the Chargers' second series of the game. And, of course, you're looking at Jack Del Rio, the interim coach with John Fox recovering back home in Charlotte after his heart surgery on Monday. We sent along all of our best wishes to Coach Fox. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to him last night, Jim. It was nice to hear from him and in good spirits and sounded great. A second and seven. As Rivers down the way. What a catch. It is caught by Ladarius Green right over Chris Harris, Jr. Excellent throw by Phillip Rivers. Tight coverage that time, no doubt about it. But when you talk about Ladarius Green, six foot six, so he uses that height, good hands, and just really goes and rip the football out of the air. Anytime you have inside help, Harris stays to the outside, but there's nothing you can do when the guy is six foot six. Goes for 25 yards. Green on this series earlier hey, had a 34-yard catch and run called back because of offensive holding. And now on first down, the toss, Woodhead. Wrestled down by Woodyard after a gain of five. The AFC West at the midway point of the NFL season, the strongest division in the league by win percentage. Of course, you got the Chiefs sitting there at 9-0 and and will be taking on Denver next week. Chiefs on a bye right now. And there's the Broncos at 7-1, San Diego at 4-4, and the Raiders lost a tight one today at New York against the Giants. Mike. 
Second and five. Uh, he loves this change in the play. Looks left now, running right, and tucks it under. River slides to about the seven near the first, and they're going to say he took himself out at about the eight. Well, that's something new for Philip Rivers. A couple of things on that play, Jim. He talked about it. Now he has the ability to ability to audible whenever he wants. So if he sees a defense, his play's not going to work the way he wants. He changes it up. I think it really suits Philip Rivers very well. He's high energy, making all those calls, and it's worked well for this offense so far this year. Trying to match the Manning touchdown pass. They actually say he slid at the nine. This is the fourth time already in this game they face third and one or third and two. Trying to run it for the conversion, and they are stopped. Ronnie Brown stopped by Knighton. Boy, Terrence Knighton, he is playing absolutely terrific inside. I would make a measure. If it's less than a yard, you have to think about going for it. Terrence Knighton, 94, just goes right around the guard, Troutman. What a play by him. A big guy that's quick, little feet, gets around the guard and makes the play. Stop the clock at four seconds. We've got a player down, a Bronco defender, and we'll take a break. He goes fullback, Leron McLean, who was shaken up. They've already got Matthews beat up after the opening drive. And here he is on the left side and gets rolled up on that third and two run inside the 10. Well, the drive has been over nine minutes. This is what they wanted. And since it's a, it's truly a long yard, no doubt they got to kick the field goal. Time runs out on the first quarter. 7-0 Denver. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Salute to our military during the break. We're going to start the second quarter with a field goal try by Novak. As the Chargers, 9 minutes and 18 seconds. The drive results in the field goal from 26 yards. Well, we've only seen three Denver snaps so far. The Broncos lead at 7-3, second quarter. Phil Sims here in San Diego as the Chargers at 4-4 four and four on the year. Taking on the 7-1 and one Broncos. Nick Novak good from 26 yards. Longest drive of the season for the Chargers, but it only results in a field goal. Novak, now this is something to watch out for. Trenton Holiday, so explosive. Novak last in the league in touchbacks. Well, he's going to bring it back from eight deep on this occasion. Holiday, and they cover him up at the 15. Well covered there by Stuckey. Tomorrow, Melissa McCarthy and Billy Gardell are back in a new season of the hit comedy Mike and Molly. Tomorrow, 9, 8 Central, only CBS. First quarter summary, we really saw the San Diego offense on the field. For almost all of it, three total plays, but of course one of them went 74 yards. Actually, 70 yards after the catch by Julius Thomas. That's a good one. It tells you don't look at numbers in the NFL all the time. Time of possession, so many numbers don't tell the truth of a game, and 57 seconds and seven points. Play action. Baker to Moreno. His second catch, and this one goes for 10. Jack Del Rio, the interim coach for the Broncos, and again, some of you joining us late, John Fox, released from the hospital on Friday after heart surgery, open heart surgery, Monday in Charlotte. No! First down carry by Moreno. And he's got about three. It was fun talking to Coach Del Rio last night, and just to let John Fox know, Jim and I were trying to talk him into a lot of fake stuff, yeah. fake kicks, field goals, go for everything. He wouldn't listen to us, though, but I guess you're happy to know that. Second and second over the head of Julius Thomas that time. 
Well, that's what you want to do. That time you noticed there was defenders close to the short throw to the outside. That's all we kept hearing from the Chargers. And, Jim, you and I have seen it many times. Peyton Manning will read a defense and loves to get rid of it fast, especially when it's a short receiver out in the flat. Monte Ball ranking Manning on third and seven. Peyton almost reaches across and touches the defender. As he now looks to throw, he's got pressure by the ankles and is knocked down for the sack by Larry English. What a good job by English getting around Orlando Franklin just timed the snap count perfectly. Up on top of your screen and just lowers that shoulder. That's what you have to do to be a really good pass rusher in the NFL. You got to be able to bend and run with your shoulder towards the ground and low, and he gets the sack. Just the 12th time this year that Manning has been sacked. That ties for second fewest in the league at the moment with Rivers, who's been knocked down 12 times. Colquitt to punt, Allen to return it. And he signals for a catch at the 29. 48-yard punt. Short work that time for the Broncos offense. San Diego takes over, down 7-3. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by Sonos, the wireless hi-fi system. A little gourmet tailgate going on here. I saw Donnie Edwards in that shot, the former Charger with his pal Jeffrey Strauss. First down, San Diego from the 29. And Ryan Matthews has returned since being knocked out in early action. Rivers again able to avoid a sack from Knighton and able to turn it into a gain of three. Don't, don't laugh at me when I say this, but I wanted to say to Philip Rivers when we talked to him this week, I well, you're moving around a lot more and running with the football. You don't think of him that way. Nice job of escaping trouble. Yeah, you got to be careful when the quarterback slides first, feet first. He is giving himself up. You're not allowed to go down there and even giving him a luck tap. Can't do it. Yeah, I think Rivers was looking around for a possible flag on Nate Irving. All quarterbacks are trained to look right away if they get touched when they don't want to. So. Second and seven, a fake to Matthews, and able to get an incompletion out of it. Again, they were draped on the quarterback. It was Derek Wolf in his face. Coverage down the field allowed the defensive pressure to get there that time. I've said it many times, this Bronco defense, they will play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. The initial protection, it's great, but he holds the football so long, you can't blame King Dunlap. Look at the bottom of the screen, this is where he wants to go. Oh, that is some terrific job by uh, Trevathan against Gates. Up top, nothing. Philip Rivers actually said to us, did he, Jim? There are games, he says, he has never hit the ground. Yeah, he said at least a couple of times. I never, ever was knocked down. Here he's able to get the pass around third down. And almost intercepted. Stepping in front was Quinton Jammer. Great job by Keenan Allen. Great job. He what he does. Philip Rivers pressure it makes what I always say. You got to make that split decision. It's time to either take the sack or throw it. When you get pressure, you don't see everything down the field. Almost a big play. Yeah, you're right. Keenan Allen was able to break up the pick. Terrific job. Cypress to punt. Mike Wint sends it back perfectly. And again, it's Holiday who's had one return for a touchdown in the punting game this year. Stutter step move, looking for a seam. Nothing there, and he is swamped at the 13 by Eric Weddle. 61-yard punt, six-yard return. Aerial coverage of today's game is provided by MetLife as you're looking at downtown San Diego where the Padres play their games, and their announcer is the legendary Dick Inbert. Hometown announcer who's here in attendance today. Got a couple Super Bowls to kick in. Play. First down throw over the head of Demarius Thomas. 
And there is Mr. Inberg, one of the all-time legendary voices of our industry. His son Teddy there wearing a Philip Rivers jersey. We've got a Bronco down. It's Sharice Wright. And we'll step aside for a moment. Here is Sharice Wright who was helped to the sideline. And they brought in Richard Marshall and Johnny Patrick's out there too. Second and ten. Manning stumbles but gets it away. Caught on the ground. For a yard is Moreno. You know, I can't tell if those plays are meant to be or they're missing the blitz or whatever is going on. But that looks very risky. And the timing is not great. That time, once again, a rusher coming right up the middle. The time it was English. Pete Manning very alert, able to get rid of the football. Third and nine, he's got Andre Caldwell at the bottom of your screen. He's hit him a few times this year, coming in and going deep to Caldwell. Manning has the pass incomplete. He's looking for Welker. And he got hit hard. The ball came out. Pretty consistent theme. We're starting to see pressure on Peyton, Peyton Manning. And this time, Wes Welker turns that head just a little too quick because he knew Cox was coming from the outside to make a big hit. That made him take his eyes off the football. That's why he dropped it. Welker, Demarius Thomas, and Eric Decker, the receivers, no catches so far. Colquitt, who has never had a punt blocked in his career, stands at the goal line. That bounces around to the 41. 45 yards on the punt. For the 59th consecutive drive, the Chargers will start at their own end of the field. 7-3, Denver. So, San Diego ready to snap it from the 41. It's a good starting point, but again, they just have had a long stretch without a short field. But this will make it a whole lot shorter as Matthews breaks tackles inside the 30 and bounces out around the 24. He got away from Mike Adams and picks up 35. Yeah, no holding on this long run. Just a quick snap by Phillip Rivers. And look at the offensive line. The double team, King Dunlap, pushes the defender down inside. And Ryan Matthews got that right leg. Hamstring taped up a little, Jim, after that first long run. But showed good speed that time. A lot of folks were still in that overtime game between Cincinnati and Baltimore when this game started. Matthews broke one for 39 yards that got called back because of offensive holding and then he sat on the bench getting treatment on a hamstring, missing the rest of that quarter. But now he is pile driven by Vickerson and a loss of three. Defense was going that way. That's why Kevin Vickerson what is it, was in the backfield. Sometimes you hear the defensive line slants. They're going to move this way. Nothing you do, you can do. You can't cut them off. Hard to do when they're big and athletic like Vickerson and Clary. Not able to get the job done. Philip Rivers, what did he say? We're not going to talk about trying to slow the offense down and possess the football. But, hey, if it just happens to go that way, that'll be great. I think he's very alert to that situation now. Second and 13. Draw, Woodhead. It squirts to about the 21. And another six. Woodhead coming over as a free agent in the offseason from New England. You've got Woodhead on one side, Welker on the other. Teammates through some high-scoring years in New England and both making impacts on their teams this year. Maybe one of the best free agent pickups of the year. You talk about Danny Woodhead. The Denver Broncos have about three different plans to make sure he's not the guy that beats them in the pass game. So that tells you how well he is doing. Third and seven. Rivers goes to the end zone. And the ball is incomplete. Intended for Vincent Brown. Kayvon Webster was back there trying to get a hand on it. Yeah, top of your screen, you got a safety out there. Let's Denver deep. Oh, a little double move. Vincent Brown, not fooled at all, looks back for the football. They are deep in the defensive backfield, the Denver Broncos are. Champ Bailey is out, but they still have plenty of good cover guys. Boy, that ball could have been caught. Yep. Should have been caught. Well, tight coverage sometimes will 
take your focus off just enough where you drop it. 40 yard field goal try on the right hash mark. And no back. He's now two for two. Good from 26, and this time from 40. Nine minutes to go, first half, and it's 7 6, Denver. The world famous San Diego Zoo in Balboa Park here. Not that far away from Qualcomm Stadium. Tonight on 60 Minutes, the Beatles, JFK, and other American icons captured by one of their favorite photographers. Behind the scenes, stories only on 60 Minutes tonight. Well, you'd like to think, what has the Denver offense done? I know they had that long touchdown throw and catch. What will they do now? How are they going to change up their offense to get these wide receivers, which you alerted us to, Jim? Haven't caught a pass. Is this the way you thought this game would be played so early? <laughs> no. And Nova. This time we'll get a touchback. How did they learn from the last time not to bring it up from a deep? Manning has uh, been perceived so far. Well, he sure has. When you want to take care, look at the hits that Peyton Manning has taken so far today. And yes, oh yeah, you know how you beat him? You hit him. Well, that, that works against any quarterback. No quarterback wants to get hit. But when you get pressure on the quarterback, and it's been consistent so far today, when you drop back and when you're back there passing as a quarterback, you've got to think, oh, well, this time are they going to protect me? So it can change your thought process a little bit. We'll see if the Chargers can keep it up. On first down, they top it off on the screen to Moreno. And Weddle and others in on that play, and Sharice Wright, who was shaken up earlier. There he is, 29. He's back in the secondary for San Diego. They have so many drive starters, this Denver offense does. All the screens to the wide receivers, of course, to the running back. You want to play tight coverage? Go throw a screen to the running back. Second and two. And that's going to pick up the first down easily. Moreno, what a year he's having, Phil. Yeah, he really is. they got to be careful how they use him. They're a little worried, Denver. This time they bring in Monte Ball because he is playing well. But if you give him too many carries, they're afraid he'll wear down and maybe get hurt. On first down, here's the throw. And the first catch by a wide out for the Broncos. But it goes for only two. Welker, knocked down by Weddle. <laughs> On second and eight. Down the field and open. It's Decker. Eric Decker. Right between Marshall and Weddle for 34. Well, I just can't imagine. It's a two-deep coverage. That time, Eric Weddle has to get over there. There's no hitting the wide receiver that time on the outside by Marshall. And Peyton Manning, that play-action fake. If you're a corner, you cannot bite and come inside. Terrible mistake by Marshall. Manning. Down the field and over the head. Oh, Walker. You know, you look at the two big plays so far by the Denver offense. What has happened? A little play action fake. Manti Teo comes up. Julius Thomas uncovered. That time a little play action fake. And Richard Marshall looking in to come and make the tackle. Eric Weddle, no chance to get over the top to stop the long throw. So Welker has his first catch a few plays back. Decker has his first catch. Maybe it's Demarius Thomas' turn. Second and ten from the 29. Julius Thomas. And somersaults at the 10. Tackled by Gilchrist. Well, when you play that type of coverage, you're playing the zone, you're just going to lose. Everybody dropping back. Nobody running with the tight end out in the flat. Two receivers go deep. And I always say this, if you play zone defense, Peyton Manning's completion percentage is about 90%. That one good for 18. And again, a first down at the 11. At the 5, it's back. That's Demarius Thomas for the touchdown, they say.
no secret to what the defense is. Demarius Thomas, 88, just a quick move outside. And they talked about it. we got to find more ways to get the football to him even more. How simple can it be? to throw it quick in the flat once again and what a play by Demarius Thomas. Wow, look at the acrobatics at the end of this to reach over the pylon. With that football, even though if he reaches out, gets it over the pylon, any part of it, it's a touchdown and they confirmed it upstairs. So he gets his first catch. All the receivers had a little hand in that drive. Demarius Thomas finishes it off. Crater adds the extra point. 14 to 6 Broncos. Demarius Thomas finds the end zone for the seventh time this year. That drive, five completions to five different players. As the Broncos, who are averaging 43 points a game, and put up 14 in this one. They're on a pace to break the Patriots' single-season scoring record set back in 2007. On pace at the halfway mark to break it by over 100 points. <laughs> well, they made it look awful easy. They got all the answers. If you protect Peyton Manning, he's going to find it. There's Frater again with the big leg. And no chance at a return. Jim, when you have a hurry-up offense, it makes the defense line up, and what does it do? It declares. It's a blitz by the defense. Watch the coverage off coverage, and it allows Demarius Thomas just a quick flat route up top. You see it by Julius Thomas. And what a move by Demarius Thomas. That's what they do. So it's a simple concept, but Peyton Manning saw the blitz, even though it was nothing. He changed it to the play that took advantage of it, and he got the football to his best playmaker. That's Gates' first catch. Goes for 11. JV and Dan have an update on Carolina and San Francisco. Hey, Jim and Phil, Dan's getting his ankle taped, so I'll take it by myself. Take a look, Cam Newton handing off to D'Angelo Williams. Williams wants to run the ball more. He got it there. 27-yard run to pay dirt. Four carries, 38 yards. Carolina trailing 9-7. Back to Jim Nance and Phil Sims. All right, JP, you can handle the load always. On your own, well done. No gain here for Ryan Matthews. It'll set up a second and ten as the Chargers trying to do something here inside of six minutes to go first half. See it so often. That was a really good play call, the first play to Antonio Gates. We saw Peyton Manning get his wide receivers involved. you got to get these receivers. you got to give them a catch to make them feel like they're part of the process and get in rhythm. Hey, no Brady. We're Brady. Load it. Brady, Brady. Brady. Up the middle. And Matthews. Stuffed by Wesley Woodyard after three. With NFL Mobile, you can get live video access to exclusive premium content on your smartphone. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Game of three. Third and seven from the 34. Phillip Rivers. And this San Diego team learning a new language with this offense. And a couple of plays, they let them keep the same name as the years past. It's about concepts this year. Well, we heard of that last play. He checked off. He just said Brady had told everybody what to do. Third and seven. And his receiver stumbled. And a flag is thrown in from about 20 yards away. Rodgers, Crow Marty might be flagged here. He's going for Vincent Brown. Pass interference, defense number 45. Automatic, first down. Well, tight coverage, bottom of your screen, 45. Rogers Cromartie, the best cover guy on the Broncos, definitely grabs him, stops Vincent Brown from going across the field. But the tight coverage on the front side, Phillip Rivers had to find the outlet receiver, which was the backside in cut. 
That tells you how well they're covering some of these guys down the field. It was a 15-yard penalty and the second interference call against the Broncos. Woodhead held the only one by Robert Ayers. Said it earlier, Robert Ayers, they just got so many, they're deep, this defense. They're willing to take chances. They do give up some big plays in the past game. They blow assignments. But what did Jack Del Rio say? He goes, look, in the second half, we are going to round together. He thinks the defense is going to be very good. And what I've watched and seen over the last few weeks, I believe they definitely have the potential. Second and nine. And that's Gates to the 30. right through the hit and is that about the 28 for 22 this time when you do a lot on defense sometimes you make mistakes and nobody comes across the formation that time with Antonio Gates the receiver that's covering lets him go and they're leaving it up to Wesley Woodyard that's a tough assignment for a big tight end to be going full speed to think you can start up and catch catch up to him second catch on this drive by Gates down Rivers pass complete and that's Vincent Brown and the forward progress is near the 20 they've been down here already a couple of times they've settled for two field goals I've always said many times he, your offense you got to spend a lot of time on ways to score and the best way to do it is to have a lot of options deception that's what you do and let's see if they come up with something new this time second and three has the first down. You know, Woodhead is one of those types of runners. When he gets the football, let's say you're a linebacker, and you try to find out where he's at. When you got massive, really big offensive linemen in front of you, hard to pick him out sometimes. We asked Mike McCoy about Woodhead, and he said, quote, he's just a football player. It is, and you look at him, and you can't believe how small he is to play so well in the NFL. First down. And they throw it to Woodhead, the leading receiver for all running backs in the league, but held to a short game. Give him two. Coming up, the Verizon halftime report with JP. And Dan will come in after having the ankles taped and go through the highlights along with Shannon Boomer and Coach Cower. All the scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon halftime report. Even though Phillip Rivers is running the hurry up offense, it's a slow hurry up. You know, they're not in any rush. Look, he's taking his time. I'm sure he's looking at the play clock. Be smart to just let it go ahead and run down. That's what he's going to do. He's going to do. So we reach the two-minute warning. Second and eight coming up out of the break. You're watching the NFL on CBS. You know, of all the many stats that I know my partner despises, <laughs> time of possession might be number one. Oh. Well, it's important when it's important. And the one thing it has done for San Diego, well, Peyton Manning's been on the field only four times, but he has gotten two touchdowns. Second and eight run by Matthews. Twisted down and about the 14. You saw it, San Diego, 21 to 6, time of possession by minutes, but down 14 to 6 on the board. And we've got a timeout call. Called by Denver. And here you see the rushing numbers by the Chargers, who will face a third down in the red zone. Having already settled for two field goals in this half, there's Woodhead at the bottom of the screen. Good timeout by Jack Del Rio, save time for Peyton Manning, and that offense once this drive is over. Got the snap away just in time, pressure on, and they'll get to him. Rivers, knocked down by Derek Wolf. Sean Phillips really kind of broke down the pocket for him, the former Charger, number 90. Yeah, they made a little switch. And Wolf, the Charger offensive line, confused just enough, and they get overpowered. Field goal try coming up, timeout Denver. So the Broncos again stopping the clock, 143 to go, and Novak out for a 37-yard field goal attempt. He's missed only twice this season. And look out here. No good from 37. You 
angle, Jim. Tell by the spin of the football, it's like a golf shot. Got over the top of it, pulls it, hooks it. Of course, points on the board. That's always what you want against the Broncos. Jack Del Rio excited, but it gives field position. You don't waste any more time. Ball back to Peyton Manning. And here he comes operating with the throw to Decker. Steps out at the 38. Decker's second catch, this one for 11. you got to be aggressive here if you're the San Diego defense. If you think you're going to work the clock down and play that game, it's not going to work. Manning already with two touchdown passes. Dumps it across the middle to Moreno. He tries to wiggle away from Weddle. He got to about the 46. Yeah, no timeout by this Denver offense. Even though the clock is moving under a minute 20. Second and three. And that one incomplete looking for Welker. Again, the Verizon halftime report is coming up. J.B., Dan, Shannon Boomer, and Coach Cower get you caught up on the late afternoon scores, including the Texans leading down in Arizona behind Case Keenum's two touchdown passes. All coming up, Verizon halftime report. Third and three here. Decker with the catch for the first on the San Diego side of the field. Well, that time Eric Decker coming underneath. They call that to route. That is something Peyton Manning created in the NFL, and everybody tries to duplicate it now. That's a toss for just a yard, the sixth catch of the game for Moreno. Now, right here, I would agree with uh, I thought they should have called a timeout, wasted too much time. This offense. Now with a second and eight. Now a seventh grab, Moreno. And bumped out to stop the clock at 29 seconds, pushed out by Johnny Patrick. When you think back, now that's right. Look at all the time it, they took off the clock just for that short throw and catch. Close to 20 seconds. Quite a bit of separation off Johnny Patrick. He's able to pick up another eight yards, and they're definitely now in greater range. Well, the success everybody has against Denver's offense, when they do, they pressure the receivers, try to get after Peyton Manning. They weren't even lined up that last play. And on the sideline, they go! And over the shoulder, catch by Demarius Thomas at the seven. Once again, the safety does not get there. There's no excuse this time. That's a day on the outs, number 37. Nobody was coming towards him up the field. He should have been over the top, helping Sharice Wright. Did not get there. Picks up 28. 19 seconds to go in the half. First and goal. And now timeout called by San Diego. actually hearing we're going to review over here the catch by Thomas on the sideline they're reviewing the catch by Thomas did he get two feet in one two even if you don't think the first one the timing all three definitely gets two feet in Tony Corrente after review the ruling on the field is confirmed as a completed pass the receiver with two steps inbounds prior to going out of bounds. First down, Denver. San Diego was trying to call timeout, but didn't have to use the timeout. Not that it matters. 19 well, seconds to go, and first and goal, Denver at the seven. Yeah, the plan when you play safe on defense, and like I said, you play these zones and you drop back, you're going to get beat. They had the perfect call on the last play. Adai, the safety, nobody to cover except to the top. Nobody coming up the field. And Peyton Manning, for some reason, somehow recognized it and threw it right on target. Denver has one time. As Peyton moves in under center. Under Ramirez. Fakes the handoff to Moreno. Throws to the end zone. And it's caught for the touchdown. And again, it's Thomas. Demarius Thomas. Beautiful little delay. The great fake up inside. It makes everybody freeze. There's no pressure on Peyton Manning, and 88, let's watch him. 
The timing, oh my gosh, it's an out and return. They've been throwing short routes to the flat. They have so many, that's what I mean by deception, Jim. When you get inside the 10, have you seen a team have more ways in short routes to get guys open? The answer is no question, it's no. Awesome job by the coaches. Extra point drive from Prater. That's a 10-point swing, the missed field goal at the other end. Peyton driving him down, hitting eight out of nine on this drive. And Demarius Thomas has scored twice today. Tuesday on CBS, a person of interest. Three episode event begins, and this time a hero will fall. Don't miss a new person of interest. Tuesday, 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Well, one of the things that Broncos did during their break, that bye week, they studied themselves, and they came out with this answer. And this number 88, Thomas, he's pretty good. Let's find more ways to get the football to him. And they're doing it here today. But also, think about what it's going to do when you play him. You have to take an extra guy, probably, to help in coverage against him. Oh, Julius Thomas, Wes Welker, Eric Decker, whoever's in the backfield, that just opens it up for the other guys also. 13 seconds to go in the half, and that goes through the back of the end zone. You know, we were saying during the break about the Marius Thomas, you said this guy right here is soon to be beast in soon the NFL. Soon to be a beast. Because because beast you know, in the NFL. Yeah, well, you got Calvin Johnson, He's a A.J. Super beast. Green. Super beast. Okay. But a beast is the guy that, because see, every game, no matter what you do, they're going to catch their passes. And the thing I like what they're doing with him, they're doing it with not only his talent, but the coaches are helping him out to get him open, to give him all these options. And we're seeing him now run every route on the field, not just deep ones down the field. San Diego takes a knee. Remember, the Broncos deferred and will receive the third quarter kick. And by the way, Jim, you're a super beast, so just to put you in that category. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. I've been called a lot of worse. things. Yeah, that's a first. Peyton, 243 yards and three touchdowns in that half. Broncos lead it 21 to 6 at the intermission. First, it was Julius Thomas. And then a couple of times, Demarius, the swan dive touchdown. And then one right before the half. Verizon halftime report coming up. You're watching the NFL on CBS. A performance presented by Intel. Well, the first one was just a short throw to Julius Thomas. He would get 70 yards after the catch. 74 yards in all. To open up the scoring in this one. This is exactly the way Denver wanted to draw it up. Get that late first half touchdown and then receive the third quarter kick. It's what John Fox likes to do, but also it suits their offense perfectly too, just in case they get that situation and they took advantage of it. Trendon Holiday, eight deep, and for the second time we'll run it out from there. Ducks down at about the 22. There were some opportunities in that first half for San Diego. Got in the red zone and missed a field goal, made a couple, but uh, unable to push it across. Well, they were hoping to hold Denver to field goals and not themselves. They did that. But think about it this way. Denver used that up by week, and they used it well. They wanted to get their offense going a little bit faster and find more ways to get the football to Marius Thomas. At the end of the first half, we saw that fast offense, and Thomas was a big, with a big, big first half. We'll run it with Moreno. And he picks up eight yards. Just the fourth rushing attempt of the game for the Broncos. And you see Manning had five incompletions. That's all. And three touchdowns. Giving him now 32 on the season. Second and two, and again it's Moreno, bouncing off the line and chugging along for another five. You think John Fox is, uh, is able to sit back and of course again, we know he's recuperating, he 
was released from the hospital on Friday. He's at a Charlotte home. What do you think it's like for him watching this? Oh, it's tough. I mean, he wants to be here in the middle of the action, no matter how he feels. I know it's how he feels. It's like a player being injured. And there's a catch by Virgil Green. I, I just wonder, did he text or did he call somebody at halftime to maybe, because sometimes you and I talk about this, what you see at home sitting on the TV or sitting on the couch sometimes, you can see things that coaches don't see in the game or announcers, whatever, and uh, I, I think he probably did have a little communication somewhere at halftime to the coaches. Yeah. Second and six, he's been in touch with Coach Del Rio over the last three days and spoke to Peyton yesterday on the phone. Quick pass, Walker, that's good for the first. And right at the 50. There's so many options built into this offense. It's a run play, and it's a screen to the backside, and he takes advantage of it. Why? Nobody's covering Wes Welker. The coverage is off. He gets a block on the outside by Thomas and picks up a first down. Take talent and put a really unique and awesome scheme with it. You can get greatness, and that's what we you can say about this different offense. Ball is the running back, and the rookie gets his first handle. And he powers ahead for four. You know, in talking to John Fox, we mentioned it on the NFL Today, his first interview after being released from the hospital. He talked with us last night, our whole team, you, Lance, Barrow, Mike Arnold. Very good spirits, feeling really good about the recovery process, anxious to get back to Denver in hopes that there's a chance he might be at his Denver home by next weekend. Four to eight weeks expected recovery before he's on the sideline. Second and six. Ball. has another first down to the 35 it was interesting though hearing John talk about how uh, he had this issue with a valve in his heart and he's known about it for years he was born with it yeah not only that after the surgery what did he say last night I feel so much yep. better and of course you can understand it when your heart works better it's gonna make you feel that way and um, had a lot of energy before this surgery, so I can't imagine what he's going to be like now. Said he had only 54% blood flow through that artery before the surgery, which came on Monday in Charlotte. First down, and almost picked up. Oh, that was Donald Butler who had a great chance to take it the other way. Thomas Kaiser helped influence that Aaron throw. Yeah, he gets a little pressure, Peyton Manning, but this is the play. It's a late hit. He got plenty of time to see it. It's what they called on said it. It's, you know, Coach Pagano, defensive coordinator for the Chargers, calls it the route, and they've done it. It started with Marvin Harrison. He threw it so many times to him in Indianapolis, and now he's continued that trend here in Denver to all the wide receivers. This is the longest they've held on to the football on any one drive today, just a little more than three minutes. And Demarius Thomas finding a little opening and all the way to the end zone. Wow, what a move by Thomas. They execute those screens so well, especially to the wide receivers. It's the blocking of the wide receivers and the offensive line. They have tremendous timing. They get outside and make the blocks. Watch it as they fake. Look at Chris Clark goes out there. Wes Welker gets a block. Well, that's a nice job by Chris Clark. Just engulfed the tackler. And Demarius Thomas, how about that? He logs these screens. He goes, what did he tell us? He goes, man, when the football is in my hand, that's when I'm at my best, and we've seen that here today. That's a three-touchdown game for Thomas, and the last player, I believe, to catch three touchdowns for a Bronco. As a Bronco is residing back in our studio, Shannon. Demarius Thomas, four catches, 80 yards, finds the little crease and takes it home for the third time today. Aerial coverage is provided by MetLife and the three touchdown receptions ties the Denver record and yes it was Shannon Sharp ten years ago almost to the day November 16, 2003 against San Diego Shannon had a three touchdown game. Well, the Mary has told us his legs are rested I believe him this one bounces into the end zone and through the back. And it's 28 to 6. San Diego will take over at the 20. Jim, let's look at how they get this touchdown. It's, there's so many things to point out. When somebody's in the backfield that doesn't belong there, look out. He comes out. Here goes the coverage. You get the blitz. 
So let's see that part of it. And then I want you to watch the left tackle and the offensive lineman. And also, look at the wide receivers down the field. Decker, Wes Welker, pin their guys. And look at these big guys. All that, that makes defensive backs. When they see offensive linemen coming full speed, you have to get out of the way. When you move, Demarius makes the cut and goes in untouched for the TD. From the gun. And a five-yard completion to, to Gates. You know, they had a kneel down, the Chargers did right before the half, but you really think the last time the unit was out here trying to move the football, they were inside the red zone, down 14-6, to six, and, of course, missed the field goal after a sack. And now it's 28-6, to six, as you see Woodyard, Woodyard shaking up on that hit with Gates. How fast it can change. Timeout on the field. San Diego home to so many of our men and women serving in the Navy and the Marine Corps. And just want to say today is the 238th birthday of the United States Marine Corps in honor of Veterans Day for every point scored during the NFL's 32 salute to service games. The league's going to donate $100 to each of its nonprofit partners, the Pat Tillman Foundation, USO, and Wounded Warrior Project. To join the salute, learn more, go to NFL. Dot com. As you see, Miramar. Air station, very close by here. Second and five as Woodyard was helped off. Being shaken up. Ten tackles for Woodyard, the captain. Matthews. About a yard shy of a first. Paris Lennon has come in at the linebacker for Denver in place of Woodyard. And changes up front for this San Diego offensive line. They really got to push backwards in trying to protect Phillip Rivers. King Dunlap is out. He's had two concussions this year, so that's been a little bit of a problem. And Jeremy Clary goes to left tackle. They're working on his neck. Sign of the offseason by way of Philadelphia. Third and one. Up. That's Raheem Moore who came over the top and made sure that Gates did not get the grab. Raheem Moore broke up the play. Well, excellent time. That was excellent by Raheem Moore. And Jim, I said it wrong. Uh, DJ Fluker went to left tackle. And Clary went to right tackle, which he was last year. Third time in this game that the Chargers have been stopped on uh, third and two or shorter. Cyprus again with considerable hang time at the 20. It's a 51-yard punt. Huge game for Demarius Thomas as the Broncos have scored 21 unanswered. Three straight touchdowns to Demarius. Back here, Jim Nance and Phil Sims and all the crew. We wanted to send along our best to one of the great members of our CBS Sports team for some five decades. Bob Welsh recovering after a recent surgery, and we're hoping he'll be back with our golf team. He's uh, recuperating right here in the San Diego area. We love him, and uh, we're so proud to be his teammate. After so many of the great shots through the years of all of our events. Here's a first and ten run with ball for a couple. Monte Ball getting a, a little work now after Moreno started the second half with two carries. Ball now with three handles. The San Diego defense, let's find out. You know, what you've been doing is not working. And the style that's worked against this offense, not very not a whole lot, but it's the pressure. Play tight coverage outside. A fake to ball. And coming from his back side, the ball is out. And it's recovered, it looks like, by the Chargers. Torek Williams hit him from behind. And it looks like Butler may have recovered it. It is Donald Butler with the recovery. 
Time to snap count perfectly. That's what's important. Top of your screen, Williams gets around Chris Clark that time. And Donald Butler back in the lineup, one of the players who can make plays to help you win. And Peyton Manning did not feel him that close. And you see Chris Clark. John Fox, what did he say about him? He's the best backup tackle in the NFL. But good timing that time by Williams. How similar did that look to the Robert Mathis sack of Peyton at Indianapolis? Yeah, and it looked almost identical. And then the one thing you worry about when you see those, the quarterback getting hurt, but really the throwing arm. You, you saw Peyton Manning. You always worry about his arm. He got hit. Fortunately for them, he's not hurt. Short field for the Chargers has been a long time from the 11th. And helmets are flying as Ryan Matthews picks up five. What a play by Raheem Moore. The receiver not able to get inside. They block it perfectly, which happens a lot in this league. You can block everybody perfectly, but the free guy, the safety, Raheem Moore, came up in there tough and aggressive and stopped it. I see Wesley Woodyard right in the middle of that huddle, 52. So the captain missed a little bit of time, shaken up, back out there. And this is the first time in 63 possessions that San Diego start to drive on this side of the 50. They've got a second and five. From the six. Got the catch at the five and Woodhead is in for the touchdown. Waited for the signal and they gave it to him from seven yards out, Danny Woodhead. It's just really an unbelievable catch. Good read by Phillip Rivers. They designed this play to throw it to Woodhead, and he looks like that time on that replay, he is in for the touchdown. Nothing down. Reaches in, and he was almost caught off guard how quick the football came and how hard it was thrown by Phillip Rivers. Jim, once again, we've seen him make a lot of good catches and good runs in New England, and he's continued to hear it. Woodhead now with 51 catches on the season. And Novak adds the extra point. All set up by the strip sack by Williams. Recovered by Butler. And then Rivers finds Woodhead for the score. Chargers haven't had many short fields because they haven't forced many takeaways. They were last in the league. Coming in with takeaway points. They got seven this time. Last in the league in negative plays by their defense. So, they said it, they finally got one. Holiday. Kicks it in gear. But then contact at the 24. 28-yard return. It's the fifth lost fumble of the year for Peyton. And again from the backside. Just blindsided. Not that time against Jacksonville, but you know, Washington, there were a couple that got away. Of course, today, this one a moment ago, he had no chance. Didn't see Williams coming after him. Always be alert when somebody different is in the backfield. This time, it's Julius Thomas in there. Wide receivers go back there. They go draw, and Moreno did not squeeze between a couple of players and is uh, set back two yards. Good job by Lawrence Guy that time getting in the backfield. There you see King Dunlap going to the locker room, the starting left tackle for the Chargers. Second and 12. Back to Moreno. There's Teo on the tackle. Interesting watching him play. He said, what a difference from college to the pros. The information, learning all of it. Number 50 reads it pretty quick this time. He says he's getting the hang of all this now and understanding and reacting much faster than he did his first couple starts. Third and three. On the job training. Always helps. And wow, 
well where they mark the market for a first down. Looked like he stepped back, but they're going to give him the forward progress for four and a first. Julius Thomas. It's a good point, Jim, as he catches the football. Is he hit going? He moves backward himself. Yeah, I, you might want to challenge that. You can't, might want to challenge that because you could get him off the field if you're San Diego. You can't. I don't think you can cha challenge forward progress, and that, that's where they marked it where he caught the football. As Moreno out to the 39, had he not made the move on his own, he had it easily. Second and six. And that time, Andre Caldwell trying to get in the reception department. Drops that one. So now a third down coming up again for Denver. And just to clarify what I said, you cannot challenge forward progress. That's a decision or judgment by the officials. Let's see if they keep when they play pressure defense, they are having success. We got it now where the Defenders are close to the wide receivers. Third and six. And down the middle of the field and incomplete. Sharice Wright was on the coverage as Peyton was going back to Demarius Thomas. Really well done by the San Diego defense. Demarius Thomas, good job of staying with the play because even though he's covered well by Sharice Wright, he stops the interception. Eric Weddle was there waiting for the catch. Keenan Allen will be back to receive the Britain Cole quit punt. Aaron Brewer will snap it back. And a fair catch at the 19. 42 yard punt. So the Rivers threw a touchdown the last time San Diego had the football. The downtown skyline of San Diego. The Chargers trailing in this one third quarter, but scored the last time. They had the football, and the defense has just held the Broncos. And the flag's out right on the snap. And here's the ball thrown incomplete in the direction of Eddie Royal. Offside, defense number 95, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. These two quarterbacks today are high-energy guys, no matter where you see them, on the field, yeah. in your production meetings. Everywhere. Well, look, at this is who they are. They want to be in charge. I think this offense fits both of them perfectly. They kind of run the same type. They want to go out there, make audibles, tell everybody what to do, and Phillip Rivers is... He's blossomed. He's had a terrific career, but this offense has been awesome for him. And it allows him to get out of bad play. On first and five. That's Matthews for just a yard. You, you know, Jim, you said something. When both the quarterbacks come in to talk to us each week before the game, Phillip Rivers and Peyton Manning, they even talk fast. And, you know, they're moving in. Phillip Rivers, his leg shakes the whole time he's it's, in the meeting talking to you. Well, he's nervous with, you know, you, you yeah, sitting right. there. No, that's just how they are. They remember they got to do this all during the week and walkthroughs and practice, and then they got to carry it to the game. It takes a lot of energy. They both have it. second and four. Time to throw it. Should have been caught. That was Antonio Gates mm -hmm. and Mike Adams behind him. Yeah, it's a it's a tough catch, but one you expect to Antonio Gates always to make, and Philip Rivers once again. A free runner coming right at him, and he takes a hit as he throws the ball. It's all that little tight ends. We've seen it the last few weeks. Right as they break, they get just that little push off, get separation. Big opportunity missed that time in this offense. Now it's a third and four. D.J. Fluker in left tackle was a right tackle in his college career at Alabama. Now left. This is a tough assignment against Von Miller. They get the first down with 
Keenan Allen. You're talking about uh, Philip Rivers. He and Peyton both. These are two of the best that we meet with at any time. And this is a great throw by Rivers. They had a first and five. And had they walked off the field without moving the chains on this drive, it would have been a huge letdown for them. Yeah, you're right. Both of them, Jim, when we talk, we meet with them. They love to just keep talking football. So it's, for you and I, the guys in our business, it's a lot of fun when you meet guys in quarterback like that. Matthews, he is wrapped up right away. That was Vaughn Miller. Next Saturday, the Home Depot SEC on CBS will feature Georgia and Auburn. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, they'll be there for it. And the studio crew on hand at 3 o'clock Eastern time next week with the College Football Today on CBS. Vaughn Miller on that last tackle. Second and 11. In stride and a first down to Keenan Allen. Good job getting rid of the football quick. I like this by the offense. But how about the left tackle? Let's watch Fluker real quick. Now gets Sean Phillips. He gets fooled, but still strong enough, and he's such a big man that he can push Phillips inside and let Phillip Rivers uh, throw it. So really good job by him switching sides. And the energy definitely is picked up by this offense, and you can feel it in the crowd. Again, fake into the line. They're on him in a hurry, and they sack him back at the 35. Sean Phillips and Vaughn Miller. Sean Phillips, a longtime teammate and a close friend of Rivers, said he was hoping to get a chance to get in on his old teammate one time, at least. Yep, he got it done. And you know, why did he get back there? Because when you see tight ends and running backs blocking these pass rushing linebackers, if you want to call that, Sean Phillips, Vaughn Miller, you just have no chance. Tough situation to be in. But you can't always have offensive linemen against a defense that has linebackers rushing the passer from the outside. That was a loss of 10. Game changer. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains. Second down. And Sean Phillips. He had a big career here. In San Diego, playing here from 04 until last year, second in team history in sacks with 69 and a half. Well, Jack Del Rio said we got him over here in Denver. He had to learn our way to do things. He's done it, and he's being more productive. Draw play on second and 25, and that's Matthews. Unable to make something out of nothing, picks up four like uh, another player down and I believe it's Troutman the offensive lineman this line has already taken a hit with Dunlap out he's going to hang in there they need him yeah they do We've seen it too many times this year. Offensive, we did the Steelers. They had five offensive linemen left in the whole second half of the game against the Jets. Third and 21. And underneath for basically two yards. That's it. Quinton Jammer. As Jammer and Phillips, yeah. the former Chargers, make a couple of plays on this series. Yeah, Quinton Jammer, number 23. And this is what I like about this Denver defense. And I've said it, they make some mistakes. But here it is, third and long, no zone, no let them get some yards and maybe run with it. Tight man coverage, put them in a position where they have to punt. Sanchez dropped it, but there was no pressure. So he's still able to send it down to the 20. There's going to be a flag thrown in on the back end of this. As Daryl Stuckey was flying through the air and was trying to down it. Well, 
Side judge with the hat off. Did he illegally go out of bounds of the first one to touch the football? There were fouls against both teams on the play that create an option for the receiving team. And there's Jack Del Rio trying to get an understanding During of that the kick, too. Holding receiving team number 36. Also, there's a foul for a kicking team member being out of bounds number number 25. Denver has exercised the option to replay fourth down. That last series by the Chargers is they'll punt it once again on fourth down. After having scored the previous time they had the football, that would have been really huge if they oh. could have gone down the field and scored again. Yeah, and what it was, Jim, you know, you, you try to always go back and let's second guess. You can't second guess it. They just got beat physically. And when that happens, there's nothing the coaches can do. Their decisions mean nothing then. And Holiday. At the 13, that decision to re-kick ended up costing them about six or seven yards. 49-yard punt. Get inside the mind of a quarterback every Monday on CBS Sports Network. As Phil and Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, and Adam Shine go all through the weekend in the play of the quarterbacks. And here's a look at our quarterback comparison today. There you go. Both of them really playing solid football today. Have Peyton Manning. Oh, my gosh. What a solid. Just another average day. 296, four touchdowns. Philip River under much more duress still. Solid, not made a big mistake and keeping his team in the game. From the 13, fake into the line. And Marino able to slip out of a tackle and take it up for about six. In the last minute here of the third, and they're still going to hurry back to the oh, line. Oh, sure. This game, you know, this is this is what they are. This is not time to think, oh, we can milk the clock. That's not how they built this offense. you got to keep going. Over to Julius Thomas incomplete. And that's Manti Teo who helped jar it out. What a difference watching him today. He is near the football, around it more than I've seen him in the previous games. It's like he told us yesterday. Starting to get the hang of it and recognizing all the plays and situations. Take that knowledge and apply it to the field. Third and four. I was going to say, Jim, he likes to do those fake snap counts to see if the defense commits. So then he can call the proper play for what he expects them to do. Got one-on-one -on -one over here and the ball's up in the air and incomplete. Decker was the target. Cox on the coverage. I mean, I know I got all the answers up here, but if you just a casual fan, if you notice when they don't have success, little pressure that time, it's late against Peyton Manning, but when they don't have success throwing the football, it's because of this. It's tight coverage at the line of scrimmage, and it carries down the field. Wes Welker did a good job fighting off Derek Cox, but can't make the catch. Two straight series now. They've Force Denver to punt. And Allen will set up San Diego at the 40 after a 40-yard punt. So you can see Phil Monday night on the CBS Sports Network. And then Wednesday night on Showtime with Inside the NFL to show the pros watch. What's wrong with Tuesday night? Well, I've got to take some time to do all this research. That and Monday morning, but uh, do you know I was quoting you last week on Monday QB, telling you because we were talking, and it was about the seven touchdowns by Nick Foles, and the first question to Chip Kelly, well, who's going to be your starting quarterback next week? And uh, so I just thought that was funny. You told it to me, and I repeated it. First down run. Uh, it's only good for nothing at all. Of course, they so, came back today and won at Green Bay. Yeah, they did. As a quarterback. But I just want you to well, know thanks that for working the end. sometimes I do listen to you. I'm setting so. you up on Sundays and Monday night without even being there is what there you're you saying. Uh, something like that. You might get one more playoff here before the end of the quarter. Nope, they're already going to advance it over. Each team with a touchdown in the third. 28-13 to 13, Denver. 
Back after this message and a word from your local station, you're watching the NFL on CBS. Played the third quarter to a draw. Denver's the highest scoring third quarter team in the league, highest scoring fourth quarter team. And they've scored more points in the second half than 21 teams have scored on the entire season. But now it's San Diego with the football, 15 behind to start the fourth quarter. Sidearm throw over to Matthews and not letting go is Trevathan. I know the offensive line had shifted around for the San Diego Chargers, but all day long. How about the little old sidearm throw by Phillip Rivers? Pressure again, Kevin Vickerson back there. And it's not only the hits. When a guy like Phillip Rivers, and I talked about it, has been so good at moving up in the pocket, they are not allowing him to do that today. Faces a third and eight. Down the field, open, and it is caught by Gates. Rivers dropped it in there perfectly, right over the top of Chris Harris Jr., and they pick up 24. Well, what do you want to call this chemistry? Gates, number 85 to the left, but it's only a three-man rush, and it ends up being a two-man rush, and Phillip Rivers, veteran quarterbacks, they know right away when it's a three-man or a four-man rush. They know when it's three, they're going to have extra time, and that adjustment by Gates was outstanding. I got to think Jack Del Rio is not going to call that defense again. From the 34. And that'll go in the books as a sack for Knighton, who's made a couple of plays behind the line. Wolf was also applying pressure. Don't forget Jack Del Rio had number 94, Knighton, down in Jacksonville, and they're really proud of what he's doing here now. That was good work by him against Troutman. Rivers finally gets to step up. Nobody open to throw it to. But Knighton in shape, making plays. You look at that big body, you just don't realize he is a tremendous athlete too. Draw on second and 13. And as Woodhead takes it to about the 31, Nate Irving ends it after six. It's a couple times today when you watch Denver's defense, they get blocked, but their linebackers are all fast, and they recover to stop plays to a minimum. Kayvon Webster shaken up, and he's going to head to the sideline. Webster, the rookie out of South Florida, who they took in the third round and has been seeing his playing time increase. Champ Bailey inactive again today. That foot not... Uh, fully recovered there's champ played in two games after missing the early part of the season re-injured a foot third and seven oh, and Rivers wasn't ready for it falls on it at the 41 and a flag is out illegal snap on the center five-yard penalty remains third down so it's no play hmm it's a break for San Diego well, well I guess what they're saying maybe a false start to that he faked the snap and then did it I, I you don't hear that call too often a legal snap but it was a good break for the San Diego Chargers it was snapped back to him by the backup Rich Ornberger not Hardwick yep he's in there now right guard at right tackle Right tackle and left left tackle now. Third and thirteen. At the ten, the ball is caught by Royal. Eddie Royal. When well, Philip Rivers hung in the pocket and he gets it all, makes a perfect throw. Number eleven, Eddie Royal. Oh, well, they try to pass it off, and Chris Harris makes a mistake. Thinking somebody deep is going to take him. They do, but it's just coming too fast. There's no way you can make that reaction if you're Raheem Moore. 
an offensive line. No starters at their original position right now trying to block Denver's defensive line. They get 30 on third and 13. And they've got a first and goal. To the end zone. And incomplete. Almost caught by Gates. But they draw a flag. Was the football tipped? Denver already been flagged twice with pass interference calls, and there you see Del Rio is saying what he saw what you saw. If it's against Denver, then San Diego would be set up at the one. Depends on what there the is no is. call for pass interference as a pass was tipped in the end zone prior to the contact occurring. Second down. So like pass interference. Well, it's tipped by Woodyard. So that negates pass interference by Adams. And look at the play. Gates almost, even having the ball change direction, almost able to reel it in off the back of Adams. So back at the seven-yard line now, second and goal. Two and he holds on. More. And Trevathan. What a job by Woodhead. Linebacker against him outside. He wrote a little pick. Raheem Moore, this is four down territory. Oh my, all the Charger fans are going, wait. We saw this last week in Washington. And you're down. The score 28 to 13. You have to think they're good. it's definitely four down territory. And as every San Diego fan knows, they have struggled. Every time they've had it right at the doorstep, including last week against Washington, timeout called by the Chargers. A third and goal coming up, a yard away. Snap coming from the one. Two of 11 plays from the one this year they've scored on. That's it. They're going to run for it and diving over the pile. It's Matthews. And they give him the touchdown on the second effort. And that will be closely examined. And if it holds up, it's the first rush touchdown by San Diego in a home game in almost a year. Tough to run right up the middle against this defense. Oh, he could, he's got he's it. He's in there. What a job. Nice effort. And he kind of turned his body and found a way to get across the goal line. This defensive I'm line. Field for an injured player is a moving, stunning defense, and it's hard sometimes, Jim, to run those type of play against, plays against Denver. 56 at the bottom of that pile, Nate Irving injured. He, Nate Irving is the one that looks like gets in there and makes the tackle. That's who they're going over. But after last week, was there any doubt that they were going to run that football that time at this defensive line? I think that answer is no. And, of course, that was four down territory. The only bad thing, I'm sorry, Jim, the only bad thing is, is the fact, game management, that they didn't get the right guys in there and they had to call a timeout. Of course, it's too early to go for two. If you do the math on it, everybody would know you wouldn't want to leave yourself nine down if you failed so you go ahead and keep yeah. yourself in a one possession game by kicking the PAT the book says go for two but I did shows you something all books don't tell the truth I tell you what that's, if that's what the book says take the book and burn it <laughs> seriously I mean no, who in the world would go for two with 10 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the game to me here's why you don't even think of going for two you want to continue the game in other words you want to at least at least have the Denver offense and team think about hey they're only one score down we have to keep pressing, uh, pressuring the issue. So if you went for two and did not get it, that takes a lot of pressure off of the Denver football team. So I always say continue the game and make the other team make plays. Let me just add, that's not a, a, exactly a New York Times bestseller, that book. Yeah. Because 32 out of 32 NFL coaches would be kicking the PAT right here, and that's what we're going to have. Well, they just put that up there to get you riled up, so that was good. We love that. 
<laughs> it's an eight-point game. It's a one-possession game. There we go. 28-20. Take a cold drink of water. You'll, 14 you'll get 14 unanswered points. So the Chargers have put up 14 unanswered. To suddenly make this compelling at 28-20. A year ago, they were the ones who squandered a 24-point halftime lead for the Broncos here as Holiday has been contained so far today. How about some of the early action around the league? Jacksonville gets the first win of the season over Tennessee. And the Lions beat the Bears. The Bears tried to tie it at the last minute, failed on the two-point conversion. And in overtime, after seeing a 17-point lead squandered, the Ravens able to beat Cincinnati as things are getting very tight in that AFC North. And how about who would have ever now uh, imagined that St. Louis would go into Indianapolis and beat them by 30? Moreno for about three. How about this AFC West? You know, coming into the year, you know, everybody knew Kansas City would be improved, but this, this division has the best, if you will, win percentage in football over the eight divisions. Yeah, it's been uh, incredible to watch, and we thought it before the season, I would have thought, hey, it might be the worst division in football. Manning throw. To Demarius Thomas, and they'll mark it at the 29, very close to the first. In fact, it looks like it's going to be enough for one. And they're giving the first down. Nice little pass rush that time by the Broncos, mixing it up. I mean, for the San Diego Chargers, they're mixing up their pass rushes and moving around and stunning, and it's uh, getting quick pressure on Peyton Manning. Hey, hey, hey. They run it right. And Moreno riding right on the back of his tight end, Julius Thomas, for eight yards. Well, when they change plays, the Denver Broncos, Peyton Manning, it's not always to a pass, that's for sure. They check the runs, it seems like, about 50% of the time. He brought the tight end over Julius Thomas, got the blocking, and they picked up eight yards. Moreno with 93 total yards, including eight receptions. And another handle here. And he bounces around and spins what should be another first down. Well, that's actually ball this time. Good piece of running by the rookie. Well, this offensive line for the Denver Broncos, very versatile, protect the quarterback. And how about this power running game at times in the second half when they need to? You want us to chew up a little clock, get the cap crowd out of it, they can run the football. See that hand signal by Peyton? Well, what does it mean? It means running play, ball, surrounded, and no game. We saw Irving get hurt down at the goal line on the Broncos' defense when San Diego scored Irving with a shoulder injury and doubtful to return. As we move inside of eight minutes, Welker on the sideline, second and ten. Again, that side is heavily manned by the Charger defense, holds them to two. You know, one thing I've noticed today, when you watch the Chargers, they're not signaling on defense to change, and I think they're doing that because, you know, people said to us and that Peyton Manning watches the signals of defensive backs, and he can change the play because of those signals. So you see they're wearing some wristbands, and they must be just yelling at each other what number it is and what defense to play. Big snap here, third and eight. And no flag thrown in the area of Decker. 
Also, Julius Thomas, a little confusion exactly who that was intended for. Well, if there's anything, I think Eric Decker, top of your screen, number 87, he extends those arms and pulls and pushes and just not able to get away from Derek Cox fast enough for Peyton Manning to hit him. It's pretty clever what the San Diego Chargers have done here today on the defensive side as far as the signals. There's Colquitt with a big boot. Oh, and it takes the high hop into the end zone. Actually hit the pylon. Hit the pylon means it's a touchback. So San Diego down 22 and one time. Colquitt almost found the coffin corner. Broncos Chargers has turned into a very interesting final quarter. Down 22 at one time, and now with the football, one possession game. Rivers has the time, has the target. That's Vincent Brown. It's all coming after Colquitt's. Only second touchback punt of the season that set them up at the 20. Now they pick up 15. Trying to go down the sideline for the deep pass. It's not there. And the protection, you said it, the time. That allowed Phillip Rivers to put a little extra heat on the football. It gets it into Vincent Brown. And they're stopping the play because the Chargers substituted. And you got to let the defense do the same. Reading that play all the way, Trevathan holding Woodhead to only three. He probably made that play because he sees it every day in practice from the Denver Broncos offense. Because if he's not there, it's a pretty good game. On second and seven. Rolling out away from Knighton and throwing it down the field. Throwing it away. Well, big third down here, of course, that's easy to say. 526 to go. You have two timeouts. If they don't get it here, no doubt they'll put the football away. Play is whistled dead. No play. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty remains third down. A little flinch on the right side by Clary. That was a defense, Jim, just for you. They lined up like they were going to give that two or three man rush. Clary, number 66. Mm, boy, that is that's a tough call. But maybe it worked out for the San Diego Chargers. That could have been a fumble. But they lined up in that defense and they came with the blitz. And the Chargers not able to handle it. Third and 12. That was caught. Fighting for the first down. It's Vincent Brown. Let's we'll see the spot. Rivers got walloped when he released it. Oh. And it is a first down. They converted a third and 13 on an earlier drive and now this one third and 12 and they pick up exactly 12. Well, look at Robert Ayers, Von Miller blitz that time. That's what I said about third and long. This defense, they're not one that sits back and lets you just pick them apart. 
What a job by Lotus. Rivers hanging in Lotus. there and making that throw. Lotus. Man, Lotus. Bobbles the snap. And recovers it. Fumbling the football was an issue a year ago for Philip Rivers. That's the first one this year. It's a good snap. He, you, again, just like a receiver, Philip Rivers' head went left. He's trying to see the coverage, wanted to make sure it wasn't a blitz, and it caused him to drop the snap. Last year he had 15 fumbles, most in the league. That was his first one of the season. Second and 14. Oh, and he's tripped up from behind. What a play by Vaughn Miller. Mm. Von Miller said that rest, or not the rest, the bye week, he worked out hard. He's so much stronger now after that six-game suspension. And you see that strength fighting Jeremy Clary and the speed to, once he's to the ground, still make the play. He had four sacks against San Diego in the two games last year. Boy, that botch snap by Phillip Rivers. Third and 16, got to get to the Denver 45 for a first. In traffic again, completes. As Royal is sandwiched between Harris and Moore. And they bring out the punting unit with 337 and two timeouts. This defense, they have it all in. Here comes the blitz. Look at them all coming from the right side. And once again, it's step up. The defense reactor, Raheem Moore, just reads the quarterback there and just gets up really breaks up that pass. Cypress punts it. Oh! Holiday. And he fumbles the football. Bajira Tutu was right on top of him as he was trying to field a 41-yard punt. And Holiday got it back with 326 remaining. The San Diego defense has made four straight stops. Do they have another one in them? Got to give, uh, when you look at this, John Pagano a lot of credit. They've changed up here after that opening drive in the second half. And they've made it tough on Peyton. And again, Chargers, two timeouts. Moreno. With a carry for six. Next week, regional action on CBS. Many of you are going to see Joe Flacco and the Ravens come into the Windy City to take on the Bears. Some will get their action late with the Chargers at Miami. And it, of course, all starts with the NFL today at noon Eastern time. Next week on CBS, six defensive backs in for San Diego. You've got to be alert for run in a situation like this. If you're a defensive lineman, don't just sell out and go to the quarterback and let the running back run by you, a first down is not devastating, but it will hurt him greatly. Second and four, they fake the run and give it over to Demarius Thomas. Similar to the play where he was able to weave through traffic with blockers in front and score a touchdown. This one goes for 12. That's what makes them so different. You, you, you gear up to stop the run, and what do they do? They throw it outside, they screen play, it's a pick. Wes Welker, great timing. To block just as the football is delivered to Demarius Thomas. A lot of options. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Uh, he's just faking, trying to get a five-yard. No, he the line. Easy penalty. Bait too wise to do anything else but that. Run it down to the two-minute warning. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Well, you see this on the sideline. What they're saying is Peyton Manning is making quick movements with his hand, trying to draw the defense offside. That is a penalty. Usually they warn the quarterback before they throw the flag. First down, Denver. Up eight. San Diego can only stop it twice. That shows you where that timeout we talked about it always comes back, it seems like, Jim, and haunts football teams. If Peyton Manning runs it three straight times, probably just one minute left in the game if they stop him.
Timeout. Chargers, let's go back to New York for an update. JB. Hey, Jim, that Carolina defense got it done again. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick late in the game trying to pick the, bring the 49ers back. He gets picked off by Drayton Florence. Carolina wins a tough ball game, 10-9 in San Francisco. In San Francisco. Back to Jim Nance and Phil Sims. Thank you, fellas. Mighty impressive win there. Both teams walk off of that field now 6-3 and three on the season. Well, maybe everybody now can say, well, who is Carolina beat? I love those questions in the NFL. Unless you beat all the top teams. Well, we wouldn't think they were top teams if certain teams beat them all the time. But that answers a lot of questions for Carolina. And what I was saying, if Peyton Manning runs it two more times, the best San Diego can do is probably have just one minute left to drive the field and try to score a touchdown. Again, Chargers down to one timeout. Second and seven. And he's going to throw it. And he hits it for the first down that basically ends it. Thomas. Peyton Manning's down. And, you know, I wonder why, one, well, they wanted to end the game. That's what they did with that completion. Well, Peyton, both ankles have been uh, an issue this season. And that was legit on him down low. And Peyton's back down on the ground. You know, if that football, regardless, I was going to second guess the play call. Just because if you punt away, it's going to be just a minute to go. As Osweiler, his backup, warms up. had talked to us last night about how he had really issues with both ankles and he needed the buy. He was talking about how he felt like the character from the movie Misery, James Conn. He just felt like he'd taken a beating. He'd been, the ankles had been wrapped up. And really kind of tracing it back to the Indianapolis game where he took a pounding a few times. Yeah, he's walking off that uh, injury to the knee and also that week to rest up his arm. There's the hit. Immediately reaches for his right knee. Because Peyton called the timeout, he is able to stay in the game. That's right. That's what he was arguing. I called timeout. I thought he was saying they did, but it... And that is Moreno. And now, after a three-yard gain... Last time out used here by the Chargers, 139. If the officials stop the clock because of an injury, which they were doing for Peyton Manning, you can stay in the game if you call the timeout. That allows you to. Otherwise, you must come out for one play. You think there's uh, any chance, any scenario here where San Diego can make a couple of stops here? Again, no timeouts. Yeah, no, now they're going to run the ball. Just do the math. 40 seconds for each play is 80, and the run... That's 90, so if you get it back, it's only going to be with a couple seconds left. I think I'm right. You know, I paid attention in math class. Called the play and said, I'm under. And that'll bring flags. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, the left defensive end, cause an offensive player to move out of his stance and fall scored. Five-yard penalty will remain second down. I tell you, Coach McCoy's team put up a pretty good uh, second half here with four straight stops on the Broncos, and there you see the neutral zone infraction. 
The Denver offense has not been penalized once today. And that's Moreno with the helmet off and everything, signaling first down and game over. Hard-fought victory if they can just not fumble the staff, of course, at the end here. But you worry about Peyton Manning. How will that knee feel tomorrow after that hit? Yes, you do. That is going to be talked about all week long because coming up next Sunday, they'll be hosting undefeated Kansas City. And what a stretch right behind that at New England and then at Kansas City. That last run by Moreno, you can see why Peyton says... He's got an attitude about him after he picked up the first down. Helmet off and all. Jack Del Rio's first ever win as a head coach when he was down at Jacksonville came against San Diego and now is an interim head coach. He's going to get a win here against the Chargers. Probably a little more excitement in this second half than one man back in Charlotte who was watching this from his home. John Fox was hoping can now for. take a deep breath, relax, and... In Hope you get well. We wish you well, John Fox. Sending our best wishes to you and your bride, Robin. Peyton Manning today, 330 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Rivers tried to mount the big rally for his team. Peyton sets an all-time record with a 74th road win as they go to 8-1 and one on the year. Peyton had come in with 73 road wins. That was uh, tied with Favre for the record. Now he holds it alone. Tonight on CBS, there you see the lineup. 60 minutes, the amazing race, the good wife, and the medalist for all the crew. Phil Sims, Jim Nance saying so long from San Diego. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. Let's go to James Brown.